I'm currently about to cry because I've literally just filmed this video and realised that my camera wasn't properly focused on my face or the books and now I'm filming it again. Welcome back to Lotus Literature. If you're new around here, my name is Amy and I run the Instagram slash bookstagram page Lotus Literature. Today I wanted to talk about the text that I'm going to be studying in second year just to kind of show you what I will be posting on my bookstagram, what kind of things I'm going to be talking about because throughout the year I'm really hoping to kind of make like educational study videos on the texts that I myself study maybe to help people who are studying these texts at like GCC and A level want a little bit more of an advanced look into these and I just thought I would show you the wide range of things that I am going to be looking at over the course of this and some of next year as well. I'm taking three English modules, which is a bit weird because I do six modules over the course of the whole year, three in semester one, three in semester two, and I do a minor in linguistics. So a quarter of my degree is linguistics, but we actually, as English students, got offered a philosophy module, looked a lot better than all the other ones that were on offer, the other English ones. So I decided to take that in second semester. I'm going to start with semester one, just get straight into the video and talk about the big module that I'm studying. Year two for me at Southampton Uni is a bit different than first year because semester one, we did four English modules. Semester two, I did three English modules and then I'd started my linguistics minor. So one of the English modules got switched to a linguistics one. And I'm really happy that I made that choice because it's really allowed me to branch out and see a lot more of the language side of English and see if that's what I want to pursue in the future as opposed to like the literary side. Um, but now we do three modules per semester. One of them is a 30 credit module. You're still doing 60 credits per semester, but um, instead of four lots of 15, it's now one lot of 30 and two 15s throughout each half of the year. So I'm going to start off with what I'm studying in semester one. I'll say the name of the module, show you the textbooks that I've had to buy, um, kind of run through what I'm studying and maybe just like explain a little bit of how I'm feeling about what I am going to study because these were all my choices this year. These were like, I got a massive list of modules to pick from. Um, I've mentioned briefly before, I'm strongly encouraged to study 30 credits from each band as they call it, band A, which is like early modern, band B, which is 18th, 19th century, and band C, which is 20 and 21st century literature. Over the course of second and third year, I have to study 30 credits from each of these. And because of the way I've planned my modules out this year, year three for me is just gonna be like modern stuff, which I'm actually quite glad I've done because I feel like with my dissertation going on, I'll just wanna do like 20 and 21st century is my favorite, like modern stuff. Um, so I'll really be interested in the modules that I do alongside my dissertation. I'm going to stop waffling about the future and talk about the now and what I'm studying in the second year of my university course. So the 30 credit module that I picked for semester one is called Queen's Devils and Players in Early Modern England and for this I've had to purchase or have been encouraged to purchase three books, two Shakespeare plays and one which was a compulsory purchase which is the big one which I'm going to talk about first. And this is the Norton Anthology of English Literature for the 16th century and early 17th century. As you can see, I've already got a little sticky note. I'll talk about that in a minute. But this was a compulsory buy because most of the course texts that we're studying in this module are all contained within this very fat, chunky book. And this is pretty much the essential kind of basic compilation compendium of every kind of well-known and well like widely studied text throughout this historical era and the reason I've got a little sticky note here is to mark where the introduction is because I'm actually making historical context notes from the first 40 or 50 pages just to give myself a bit of background for the literature, poetry and plays that I'm going to be studying in this module. And this is obviously like early modern England, the Renaissance period. So it's not something that I've studied really in depth in school before, but I'm actually really looking forward to delving a bit into earlier history, especially in regards to literature, the foundations of the theater and the introduction contains these tables here. I don't know how well you can see because of the lighting. 
but this is just a brief overview of the texts that were published in each year. So like the 16th century, it says, so for example, it says that around 1587 to 1590, Shakespeare begins his career as an actor and a playwright. So it kind of gives you a quick historical overview, but as well, you have like the detailed text, which is what I've been making notes from. Hence why I've got the sticky note to mark off where I'm at in the notes. And in the next few weeks, I'm really gonna be working on getting my um, preliminary notes done for this module, because I wanna get ahead a little bit, wanna kind of, be familiar with the history and I think it's really good to even if you're just at GCSE or A level if you've got a bit of extra time do a little bit of historical background reading around the time that your texts were written and um, what your authors were doing just so you get a little bit more of an in-depth view of what may have influenced their writing it just goes so so in depth already in the introduction like I've got a lot of notes just from the first few pages but this isn't the only text I had to buy for this module. I actually had to buy, as I mentioned, two other texts. These are two Shakespeare plays. These are the new Cambridge Shakespeare editions and I highly recommend these, not only for uni studies, but for GCSE and A-levels as well. If you're having to study Shakespeare, like I did in school, I've pretty much only read tragedies apart from like Twelfth Night. And Twelfth Night and Othello, the, the complete texts are actually all in this book. I, I'm still studying one comedy, one tragedy. My comedy is As You Like It, and then my tragedy is the second part of King Henry VI. I really find these editions useful because not only have you got quite a lengthy introduction at the start, like the historical background, but also when you get into the play itself, instead of having to flip to the back for footnotes, like I remember having to do for King Lear, the footnotes are all just underneath the text itself, so you've got easy access to sort of translations. I say translations, but you know, like old English to modern English translations. Um, you've probably got like a little bit of background about like inside jokes or jokes of the era that maybe now we wouldn't use or understand. And I think these are great additions. They're quite cheap actually for what you get. Like you get so much like resource within here as well as the actual play. I highly, highly recommend these as standalone Shakespeare texts. Um, my lecturers actually recommended not just this year, but in first year that we all buy like the complete works of Shakespeare. And I'm not gonna do that because it's not something that I would read off my own back in my own time. I'm not the greatest fan of Shakespeare, but now that I have more of an appreciation for older literature and the foundations of it, I'm actually not too fussed about having to study two texts. Um, and I made a post about this on Instagram a few hours ago, just saying like, even if you're a Shakespeare hater from before, then it's actually easy enough to kind of overcome that. You just have to find the right Shakespeare text for you. And I'm really, really hoping that As You Like It in particular is something that's for me because I really enjoy comedy in literature and performance. So hopefully the comedy aspects will appeal to me. I don't even mind studying the tragedy now because I know I've got that comedy to fall back on. And what I'm assuming is that we're studying two one from each because it's easy to compare them, I guess. But that is Queen's Devils and Players in Early Modern England, my first 30 credit module for semester one of year two. The second module that I have chosen to study in semester one is another English module, a 15 credit one this time. But as you can see, I'm actually missing a book from the stack because I've just put it away. These are all the books that I'm gonna be studying for my children's literature module in semester one. And I'm just going to take you through what the books are. So we've got Alice's Adventures in Wonderland, Through the Looking Glass. I don't think I have to read Through the Looking Glass, but I'm looking forward to reading this in the next few weeks before uni starts, because this is the first text of the module. Then we have The Wind in the Willows by Kenneth Graham, something that I loved reading as a child. And this edition was actually only five or six quid. Here we go with my hardback love again but it's such a cute little, like a quaint little edition. I really love the little image on the front, it's so cute. But these editions, I believe they're like Wordsworth Library editions or something like that. I'll link them below if you're interested in just getting them for general reading. Um, there's so many texts for these, but I'm studying this in the second week. Then I am studying Francis Hodgson Burnett's The Secret Garden. Again, something I personally read when I was younger, really looking forward to getting back into it. Next is something that I tried to read with like my reading group in year six in school, but we all DNF'd it because we just found it completely and utterly mind, like mind numbing. Um, and that is Tom's Midnight Garden, something I've wanted to give a second chance for a couple of years now. 
And it actually put me off seeing this on the reading list when I was first looking through the modules. Children's literature wasn't one of my first choice modules when I first kind of made my final list. And I didn't officially submit it because we couldn't. But when I personally decided what I was gonna study, I actually chose to study Arthurian worlds, like King Arthur, Knights of the Round Table. But when I saw some of the people on that reading list, I was like, not doing that, not doing Chaucer, not doing Spencer. So I picked children's literature, so glad I did now that I've got all my books, especially the last one I'm gonna mention. But I wanna give this another go and I'm looking forward to giving that another go in like just over a month or so. Sticking with the name Tom, we have Uncle Tom's Cabin. And I read the blurb for this a little bit earlier and it's really intrigued me because it's listed as the most popular, influential and controversial book written by an American. I've never read this. I believe like I've heard of it along the uh, like along the line. Um, and we're actually studying this for two weeks because it's a little bit bigger than all the other texts on the modules. Really interested to see how this one pans out. Another book that I'm studying in my children's literature module that I had not yet heard of is Roll of Thunder, Hear My Cry by Mildred D. Taylor. Lovely cover, really like the lightning bolt. And the title in itself has intrigued me. It almost sounds like a war cry. Again, not too sure what this is about, but I will update you on my thoughts and feelings when I study it. Then second to last text that I will be studying is The Adventures of Huckleberry Finn by Mark Twain. This is my own copy. I've had this for months and I was actually planning to read it maybe next month or in August before I got the reading list. Glad that I already had a copy and didn't have to invest in any more money. Um, and this is one of the Penguin English Library editions and I love these editions. I'm really looking forward to reading this one because it's something that was already on my to be read pile for enjoyment. So studying it might take the fun out of it, but at the same time might make it all the more enriching. And then the final book on my children's literature module is actually something that I've just put away because it is Philip Pullman's Northern Lights, the first book in the His Dark Materials trilogy, which if you're following me on Bookstagram, you will know that I have just finished the entire trilogy. A little bit frustrating, we'll admit, that I've just read the entire trilogy just for enjoyment and it's something that I really, really, really loved. Um, but I, I'm not too fussed about having to read the first book again because I think I'll get through it a lot quicker. I know what happens, I know the general gist, um, I know all the themes and kind of what goes on. And as I've said before, I think it's something that is not inherently children's literature. I think studying it is gonna be really worthwhile to see kind of the adult themes hidden underneath it, like the focus on religion and science. Um, and although it is listed as children's literature, as I've mentioned many times before, I don't think it's inherently children's that I think anyone of any age can read and enjoy it. So that is everything I'm reading on my children's literature module. Then my third module of semester one is my linguistics module. I don't have any set text for that as far as I'm aware, but I've managed to find a PDF of one of the like old reading lists. So I might use that for supplementary study in my own time. And the module itself is called discourse analysis, which I believe is kind of looking into like the meanings and the sort of scenarios in which you use certain dialects and certain words and phrases. I'll let you know a bit more once I've gotten into it because I'm not too sure about it yet, but it was the most interesting sounding out of all the options for semester one. So I'm really, really intrigued by that. Moving on to the modules that I've chosen in semester two. I'm only doing one English module in semester two, but the English module is my 30 credit English module, my big one, and it is an introduction to 19th century British literature. And the main text that I've been told to read because they know it's long and because they know that you're not gonna be able to read it unless you're one of the fastest readers ever, probably. Um, you're not gonna be able to read it all in enough detail and in enough time for the lecture and seminar is the Oxford World's Classics edition of Charles Dickens's Bleak House. You can tell from the spine, it's a thick book. It's almost a thousand pages, 915, not including footnotes. There's like a load of footnotes and stuff at the back. Um, there's a lot of illustrations as well. So it's probably closer to about 880 pages, but my goodness, this is the biggest text that I think not only that I've had to study, but that I'm ever gonna have to read in my life thus far. Saying that I am reading Game of Thrones at the moment, the series. So they're quite thick books. I've read The Inheritance Cycle as well, and they're quite thick books. Um, David Eddings, the prequels, they're like six, 700 pages. 
Um, and Stephen King's It and The Priory of the Orange Tree are two of the largest books, and James Herbert's Ash actually are some of the largest books on my to be read pile for me, for pleasure, for enjoyment. But I'm, I'm not too fussed because I know Charles Dickens is readable, like it's understandable. Like his works have been adapted into films, theatre, everything like that. They're widely loved today. And I've, he I've heard of Bleak House before, obviously, but I didn't know what it was about. And from the blurb, it suggests a murder mystery, which I'm really interested by because I haven't read very many murder mysteries. Like I want to try out Agatha Christie at some point, but murder mystery is something I've always wanted to read into a bit more. And I think Bleak House is going to be a great way to do that. Um, I'm going to start this over Christmas, maybe get a third or half of it done just because I know I'm not going to be able to read the entire thing, even like a week, a week and a half before the deadline, sort of when the lecture and seminar is. But as big as it is, I think I'm ready for a challenge of a book this big, especially if it's for my course. I think this is really going to test whether I've kind of improved in my mental health and whether I'm able to tackle a book of this length for my course, not just for my own enjoyment. So a big challenge and something that I think I'm going to make a whole video on when the time comes. Um, but if you've read this, please message me on Instagram or comment below, like telling me your thoughts, because I'm really, really interested by this. And I didn't know that Charles Dickens had written such a big work. So definitely something that I'm quite interested and intrigued by and something that I actually can't wait to start. I do actually have a lot more text to study for the 19th century literature module. Um, I've added them to my Amazon basket. I'm going to order them when the student loan comes in at the end of the month. I can't really remember what they are. I think one of them's by Mary Prince. Um, but a lot of the text for this module, I've already been told by the module conveners that we're going to get a handbook at the start. Um, a lot of it's like short stories and poetry. So they're going to compile them all together for us and give that to us as a module handbook at the start of next semester, which I think is really, really kind and useful of them. Saves us a lot of money as well. And just having to buy three or four books per module isn't actually too bad. So I'm not too fussed about that. And it also means, because it's my only English module, that my reading list and my bank account are going to be quite grateful that I don't have so many other books to buy. However, part of the reason why I'm not doing two English modules and a linguistics module in semester two is because we were offered a philosophy module as the English cohort, um, the straight English cohort. But I have chosen to study the philosophy module entitled Aesthetics in semester two. And I don't believe thus far, obviously I haven't been emailed, I probably will be closer to the time, maybe over Christmas. But I don't believe thus far that I actually have any set texts. I think it's just snippets that they might upload as PDFs. But in order to get ahead, because I've never done philosophy before, like I have no idea of the foundations of it. It just, the module sounded a lot more interesting than anything else that was being offered. I have actually gone onto the module homepage on my university's website, looked at the reading list, and I ordered a secondhand copy from World of Books through Amazon of this book here, The Routledge Companion to Aesthetics. I've had a quick flick through because it's actually arrived today, Bleak House arrived today too, but this is really, really useful. I feel like this is going to be really useful, not just for aesthetics, but for kind of getting a grounding of the most popular and well-known philosophers in general too, um, like Plato, Aristotle, Heidegger, Nietzsche, they're all in here. And I think I'm just going to start making notes for this, maybe November, Christmas time, just to get a grounding of what philosophy and more specifically the philosophy of aesthetics is all about. And the module quite intrigued me because it's talking about the value and beauty of art and literature, something that I've been quite interested in, something that I wanted to read more of, kind of what inspires people, um, not just like historically, like my Queen's Devils and Players module, but also in the natural world. Um, what inspires people in the natural world to write what they write. I'm quite glad that I've gotten this to get ahead. And like I say, it was second hand, but it's in really nice condition. Like I don't mind the fact that the spine is just a little bit damaged. Like at least I can read the book. And as long as I can read the book and make notes from it, you know, no complaints from me considering a, a new copy of this book would be 50, 60 pounds, which is absolutely ridiculous. But I got it for five or six and I think that's an absolute bargain and it's going to be really, really useful for me come second semester when maybe I'd be a little bit lost had I not decided to invest in this wonderful book.
Then the linguistics module that I'm taking in semester two, obviously I don't have any textbooks for it yet, that may change um, as with aesthetics, but it is teaching English as a foreign language or TEFL for short, T-E-F-L, TEFL. Um, and I'm, I'm actually really, really looking forward to studying that. I always got the mic taken out of me in first year by my flat, like, oh, you're doing an English degree, you're just gonna be a teacher or a librarian. But I think teaching English as a foreign language is quite an important thing now, considering it is one of the widest spoken, if not the widest spoken language in the entire world. So I guess the more people that you can communicate with, the better. Like, I know it's more of a practical thing than like a kind of, you write down notes, you learn the notes, you transfer them to like your teaching. I think practical like teaching and practice in front of students is something that's really going to be useful in this module. I think I'm quite prepared for second year now. I really just want to like get it started, get my studying started, get back into my routine, get back into my old study habits. I really thought I had to push myself this year to kind of prove to myself that I have gotten better and that I can do this. So that's pretty much it from me today. I hope you've enjoyed hearing a little bit or a lot knowing me and my waffling about all of the modules that I'm gonna be studying in my second year of my English slash linguistics now slash philosophy degree. Um, it's actually just English with a minor in linguistics. So if you wanna know anything about studying an English degree in general, do feel free to comment or message me on Instagram. My DMs are always open for that kind of thing and for pretty much everything. Um, likewise, if there's any books that you wanna see me do like an in-depth review or like a study guide for, then I'm really prepared for like, I'm up for doing that because I know that some of the texts might actually be studied at GCSE and A level. And I'm really looking forward to making a lot of videos on the texts that I'm studying in the future, especially the children's literature ones. I wanna kind of talk more about the underlying like adult themes within children's literature that you might not see until you get a little bit older. Maybe read it to your own children and then realize, oh, there's a lot more to this than I thought when I read it. So thank you very much for watching. If you enjoyed the video, don't forget to give it a thumbs up because this is my second time filming it and my voice hurts, my back hurts, and I'm absolutely exhausted. I'm gonna have to edit this again. Also, don't forget to subscribe down below. It would mean a lot to me. Leave a comment if you want to about any of the texts that I've mentioned, about any of the kind of philosophy and linguistics things that I've mentioned that you're interested in or anything that you'd like to hear me talk about a little bit more in the future. Thank you for your time and I will see you in the next video. Thank you and goodbye.